So today we're going to be measuring the kitchen range hood exhaust fan flow and we're going to be using two tools. We're going to be using this uh, velocity pressure pitot tube and we're going to be using the DG700 uh, manometer, digital manometer. So what's interesting about this is basically this uh, pitot tube is like a static pressure pitot tube and a stagnation pressure pitot tube. So it actually has little tiny holes along the, the sides here that get connected to this pressure tap and then it actually has a hole inside the tip like a stagnation pressure probe uh, pitot tube that gets connected to this tap. Now what's interesting about this is you're going to hook this up to the DG700 gauge so that it's going to tell the difference between the static pressure and the stagnation pressure and that's going to give us dynamic pressure or sometimes referred to as velocity pressure. Now velocity pressure can be converted to a flow rate uh, in feet per minute and then that can be converted into cubic feet per minute, a volumetric flow rate, volume, uh, when we know the diameter of the duct. So we're going to be actually going up into the attic, uh, we're going to be drilling a hole into this straight metal uh, kitchen range hood exhaust pipe and we're going to insert our uh, velocity pressure pitot tube into the uh, duct and we'll take a traverse reading. So we're going to insert it in and then we're going to take uh, four readings across, uh, average those readings out, and then that will be able to give us the information we need to convert it into the kitchen range hood exhaust fan flow rate. We're inside the house and we're looking at the, the kitchen exhaust uh, hood right here. Now code requires that the kitchen exhaust hood moves uh, exhaust out of the house at least 100 CFM. Um, Typically, the way they get installed, they don't move that much. Um, some of them will move more. We think generally you should put in a 150 CFM fan if you want to actually move 100, uh, just to be on the safe side. These things are actually source uh, control measures. So this, this is going to actually control the moisture that's generated um, at the cooktop uh, and is going to exhaust that moisture out of the house. So this is a moisture control, and its uh, byproduct is it's also odor control. Now, you'll notice that this fan um, here is actually labeled. Uh, and it's got one switch, a toggle switch up here for the light, and it's got one for the fan. And it actually has two settings. It's got the low setting and it has a high setting. So we test this. We want to test it in the high setting. And so I'll go ahead and turn this on. And uh, having told the, the people that live here not to turn this off because we're going to go up in the attic and measure this, it would really suck if we get up there and all of a sudden somebody turns this thing off and we have to come back down out of the attic. Since this is in Texas, um, and it's uh, pretty hot in our attics, so I'd rather just make one trip up there and get in and out as fast as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to the high setting, and then we're gonna go up into the attic, and we're gonna measure uh, the, uh, the, the, the volume uh, in this device. So we're up in the attic, and here's the kitchen range hood exhaust vent pipe. Uh, coming up from the kitchen range hood. So we're going to take our drill and we're going to very carefully, probably not very carefully, uh, we're going to avoid this seam because we don't want to drill anywhere near that seam right there. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drill a hole through the sheet metal. Right there. Uh, and put the drill down. And then we're going to insert our velocity pressure uh, pitot tube into this. And we're going to measure what the velocity pressure is and convert that to a flow rate. I've inserted the uh, velocity pressure pitot tube uh, with the tip foist, uh, forced um, or pointed in the direction of the airflow. Um, so it's going to measure the stagnation pressure. And so that's going uh, on channel A is going to the stagnation uh, pressure port, which is at the end. And then channel B is going to the static pressure port, which is coming off the side of this velocity pressure pitot tube. Now, with this gauge set up in pressure pressure mode and with it set up in channel A and channel B mode, what I would have to do is then record these numbers and then subtract the A channel from the B channel. And that difference will give me the velocity pressure. However, if I did something a little bit different here and I simply put them so that it's on this, now it's going to actually display the, the pressure difference um, and it's going to record it in inches of water column. That's what I've got the gauge set up for right now. Uh, and so it's got that uh, set up that way. Now what I would do is I would record the reading here 
and then I'm going to withdraw the pitot tube out um, about a third, a quarter to a third of the way through, and then I would record that value, 0 0.034, uh, 0 0.0320, and then pull it back out again, and I get 0 0.0312 or 336, and pull it out again. You can see it's bouncing around, and this is why you would have to take an average reading, because it's, um, and now I've got 0 0.0387, 0 0.0442, so you would just take these averages of these numbers and you would add them together and divide by the number of readings that you've taken to get the um, average um, velocity pressure. Now, the other cool thing about this uh, DG700 gauge, as I pull this uh, velocity pressure pitot tube out again, is if I put it on this side over here, on the B side, and I change the mode, from pressure, pressure, pressure flow, pressure flow at 50, pressure flow at 25, pressure uh, AH, to pressure velocity. And then I, again, carefully insert this in, and lost the end of the tube here. So common problem when you're dealing with sweating in a hot attic. Um, so now I insert it into here again, and this time it's going to measure and, and display the feet per minute. So the gauge can do all that math for me and just convert it directly, the velocity pressure directly to feet per minute. And I can take the reading there, and so I would take it and then um, Say it's up against that edge. It's 451. Withdraw the tube. 300 and 295. Withdraw the tube. 381. Withdraw the tube. 475, 525, and withdraw the tube so that it's up against this end. And I'm back to 463. Then I'll just take the average of those readings, and that will give me the feet per minute. Now, the other thing that I need to figure out here is what is the diameter of this duct. And we need to have the inside diameter. So one simple way to do it is to simply insert the pitot tube until it presses against the other side of the duct, right? Pull this out and then measure the difference as I disassemble this. Measure from here to there and that'll give me a really rough idea of the diameter of the duct. So. Here, pull out my handy measuring tape, which for some reason seems to be stuck. And I have a six inch diameter duct. So I can do the math and convert six inch uh, diameter duct, round duct, to uh, square foot number. And we'll show you how to do all that math uh, here shortly and convert all of that into an exhaust fan, uh, kitchen range hood exhaust fan flow rate. We've made a hole in this uh, range hood and we're gonna need to close it up. Now, uh, I'm using some tape. I know all tape fails. And the tape that I'm using is UL181A-P, so that's ductboard pressure sensitive, or pressure tape, and UL181B-FX, so that's um, uh, uh, tape for flex duct. Uh, this is a metal duct, but since all tape fails anyway, I'm going to be confident that this will work for our purposes today, or for any purposes, um, dealing with sealing small holes like this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this paper backing off, and seal up over that hole.
Anytime you make a hole in something to do a test, you should always make sure that you've got the sealing materials to seal up the hole after you're done. Now we're going to take the average of our uh, uh, velocity, uh, the feet per minute. Uh, so we had 451 plus uh, 295. Whoop, it's clear. 451 plus 295 plus 381 plus 475 plus 525 plus 463 equals 2590 and that was six different readings so we'll divide that by six uh, equals 431.6666666 all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into memory and clear that out. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to calculate the uh, surface area, um, the cross-sectional surface area of that six inch duct. So uh, if you remember the equation for the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, pi r squared, so we're going to uh, square the radius. It was a six inch duct, so it has a three inch radius. So three times three gives us nine times pi, 3.14, whoop, 3.14. Really helpful if you actually hit the right numbers. 3.14 equals 28.26. Now that's in square inches, we need to convert that to square feet, so we would divide by 144 square inches in a square foot. Gives us um, the square footage of the cross-sectional area of a six inch duct is 0.19625 square feet. 0.19625. So if we recall memory times 0.19625, it gives us a flow rate of 84.7 one four five eight three 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 cubic feet per minute so it gives us a flow rate of 84.7 cubic feet per minute now I'd probably call that 84 and so remember that this was on the high setting for the range hood the high setting of the fan and it should be moving hundred and it's actually moving 84 cubic feet per minute and this is very common that these kitchen range hoods are actually underpowered and aren't delivering uh, what they should be delivering